Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. America, I think we've grown a little too accustomed to seeing scenes like this from the Middle East. We have, we have seen this kind of hatred for a long time, hatred towards American and the Western way of life and Israel is becoming so commonplace that I believe we're desensitized to it and our media doesn't show it. I believe we are back in the 1990s, 1998. I had a hard time convincing New Yorkers when I was on the radio in uh, New York. I had a hard time convincing them trouble was on the way from Osama bin Laden. I said this. Are you absolutely ready to wage war against terrorism? As you see body parts of your neighbor or somebody that you were driving to work with or as you come out of a uh, store uh, downtown and uh, you see that a child has been blown up and the side of a building is gone, are you still going to support it? I warned at that time that there was problems coming and no one would take Osama bin Laden seriously. No one would listen then. And I think it's because it's too horrific to think. You don't want to think that people actually mean death to America, death to Israel, and mean the actual people, but they do. We look at these pictures and we refuse to see in the crowd that was celebrating freedom. This is uh, Tahrir Square in Egypt. In this very crowd, at this very time, they were raping CBS News' Lara Logan while chanting, Jew, Jew, Jew. It is time for people to stand up. It is time for people to say what they mean and mean what they say. It is time for the media to call these kinds of actions and these chants by name. This is evil, period. Tonight, you will see a different perspective. One I ask you to DVR and share with a friend, because it's one you won't see anywhere else. Maybe it's laziness, maybe it just doesn't fit the agenda. I don't know, I don't care anymore. The truth you will see tonight is the truth without an agenda. Hello, America. Uh, tonight, I am going to continue my quest to try to wake uh, America and the world up on something that I believe we're ahead of the curve on yet again. But this one could be for the whole ball of wax. The hatred against Israel and the Jewish people is nothing new. And when you begin to understand its history, you begin to understand the Middle East, and you begin to see what is coming our way. I'm going to try to show that to you tonight. The level of hatred that is, is in the Middle East has always been um, high, but it is growing now into something much more dark and much more sinister than anything the world has experienced since the 1930s. The links that people have to go to to ignore it in the media and your neighbors to bury their heads in the sand and not see it is stunning. Yesterday in the news, we have a prominent Iranian cleric. Now this is Mahmoud Ahmadinejad's spiritual mentor. He came out yesterday urging followers to ramp up suicide attacks against the Israelis. He says they're legitimate and a must for every Muslim. He even believes it's okay for suicide bombing attacks to target Israeli children. May I ask you, good or evil? Say it and speak it by its name. Do not tolerate it. Now, this is in a region that just had Nakba Day protests. 90 days ago, I couldn't even told you what Nakba meant. Now, I have educated myself and I see what it means. Nakba is the great catastrophe. Nakba Day, the day of the great catastrophe. What is the great catastrophe? The day of independence for Israel, the founding of independence of uh, Israel. 
It would be like um, the rest of the world celebrating the 4th of July while chanting kill the Americans and meaning it. These people were in the streets over the last couple of weeks not just encouraging but salivating over the slaughter of Jews. They rushed the borders, they instigated clashes with Israeli border security, and there is another flotilla now planned. There is also something new now on Facebook again. The youth of June 5th. This is pro-Palestinian groups. Remember, not anti-Israelis. No, they've learned. Pro-Palestinian groups. They are planning yet another bro uh, border protest this Sunday. This is going to protest the anniversary of the Six-Day War. You know, those, those uh, borders that the president keeps talking about? This is the anniversary of those borders. They want, they want those all across the Arab world to rush the Israeli borders from Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, and Gaza. Hit them from all sides. They're planning this this Sunday. I told you yesterday that they would rush the Israeli borders to force the Israelis to shoot them. They will. I don't know if it will be this Sunday, but they will. When that happens, it just depends on who can, has control of the media and if Americans and the rest of the world understand that you're being set up, and so is Israel. People don't understand why I keep harping on Israel. Well, because you need to know you're being set up. People will say, well, they've hated each other for years. The Jews and the Palestinians and the Arabs, they've been going at it for thousands of years. They're never going to sell it. I don't care. Let them attack each other. I can relate to that because I used to be the same exact way uh, up until really after 9-11. It took me about a year to really begin to understand the importance. If you've listened to my radio program for a long period of time, um, you know that when September 11th happened, people called me and asked and said, how did this happen? Why did this happen? And I said, I'm not sure yet, but I will try to find an answer. I made my first trip over to the Middle East right after September 11th, and I found my answers. It took me about a year, but I found my answers. If you've listened to me, you know that I was on the Iranian story um, and the Muslim extremist story for a very long time. Over at the other network, I was the one that brought you a special that was, believe me, over at the other network, it was like pulling teeth to get it done to show you Muslim extremists in their own words. That hadn't been done before on American television until I was over there. Um, I know this story. I know who these people are. I know what we're up against. We are up against, and so is Israel, the exact same people that flew planes into the World Trade Center. But that's not their way they're being imaged now. They've learned. It is no longer an acceptable position for Americans or anyone on the face of the earth to close their eyes. Um, not because we have the responsibility to protect, as the president says, but because self-ignorance, self-imposed ignorance, is dangerous. It is dangerous to the Jews. It is dangerous to Israel. It is dangerous to the world. It is dangerous to the United States. It is dangerous to you and your soul, quite frankly. I've told you, as Israel goes, so goes the Western world. They are the keystone to freedom in the Middle East. If they fall, we all fall. Tonight, I'm going to show you history. I've got less than an hour now, so we're going to have to race through this program. But you need to have some perspective on where this hatred has come from. Please pardon the sloppiness, because we're going to cover, we're going to cover 2,000 years quickly. Um, but I urge you to do your own homework and look these things up for yourself. People tend to forget that our society is based on the history of the Jews. When you go to the Supreme Court building, try looking up. You'll see this over the door. You will see a row of the world's lawgivers. Right in the middle is Moses, and he is holding the Ten Commandments. Moses is also featured in the House chamber where the president gives his State of the Union address. The Statue of Liberty, most people think she's wearing a crown, but she's not wearing a crown. If you've ever been over to, um, or you've seen um, Michelangelo's Moses, he's carved him with horns. That's because of a mistranslation of the scriptures. It's not horns, it's rays of light. 
This isn't a crown, this is the rays of the sun or the rays of light coming from behind her. The tablets in her arms represent the moment Moses descends Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments, it's the law, and the ray of light from God on her head. There's a quote from Moses on the Liberty Bell. The Pennsylvania Assembly chose, Proclaim liberty throughout the land to all the inhabitants thereof. That's from Leviticus. It's on the Liberty Bell. Jefferson, Franklin, John Adams led a committee designed um, uh, to come up with the seal of the United States. You've seen the seal of the United States a million times, but this isn't what they originally designed. The original design was this. It was Moses leading the Israelites across the Red Sea with a pillar of fire keeping the Pharaoh at bay. Around the seal, it doesn't say e pluribus unum, it says rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. That's our original seal. And they all center around Exodus and Moses. These are just a few examples of the influence that Moses has had on us. There are many, many more. It is impossible to argue that we are indeed a Judeo-Christian country. Given the spectacular results of basing a country on those principles and values, most people are cool with that. Most people now are growing apathetic, however, and they're like, whatever. Because we're too far removed from the types of religious oppression of the Founders' era. And we are too far removed from the religious oppression that is happening currently in the Middle East. As we sleep, those vocal few who don't like freedom of religion have made progress. And they have worked feverishly to fundamentally transform America. But they haven't. If you change, if you fundamentally transform America, the greatest country ever created in the history of the planet, you should clearly explain to people what you plan to change to. What are you going to change into? But nobody has done that. It's just change. And that's what's happening in the Middle East. Well, what does that change mean? No one is willing to lay that out for you. No one's willing that, to lay that out for the American people, not even the president. I will. I have. And I will continue tonight. The science is settled. We are a Judeo-Christian society. The argument is whether we will remain a Judeo-Christian society that not only tolerates, but embraces and protects all other points of view so long as you are not trying to blow things or people up. That is what is at question. Will we remain that country?